you're very welcome to the state we're in. Almost two weeks ago, I spoke to Dagny Pavlov from Ottawa, who was part of the Freedom Convoy 2022. It was actually the Saturday afternoon when the police were moving in on the people that had peacefully assembled on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. Dagny joins me this evening to give me an update about what is actually happening in Canada. Dagna, you're very welcome to the state we're in. Thank you so much for having me again. It's a pleasure. Dagny, when I last spoke to you, it was that fateful Saturday afternoon in Ottawa when the police were just uh, moving in to clear out the people who had been protesting against uh, the vaccine mandates for, I think it was possibly coming up on three weeks. So can you please uh, give me an update about what is the current situation in Ottawa and in Canada in general? Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible how how distant that that already feels. Uh, so much has happened in between. But uh, what happened, uh, as you very well know, is that the uh, Emergencies Act was invoked. Um, I will say uh, wrongfully and illegally, and there are so many challenges right now uh, being put before the courts uh, to deal with the the fallout from that. And right now, what what happened is that since we last spoke, the Emergencies Act was invoked and then revoked. So uh, we are currently not in a state of emergency. The backlash coming from uh, constituents in Canada far and wide, regardless of their position uh, towards the convoy, uh, was, was such that our government couldn't justify using uh, and invoking the Emergencies Act for any longer than it already did. Uh, what we're seeing right now is uh, a lot of people who have been arrested, who have had their bank accounts frozen, who um, were brutally removed from their, their peaceful protest. And what we're dealing right now is, is the fallout from that. So we're trying to connect people with the adequate legal services that are available to them. We've got the truck drivers who had their trucks uh, basically... Uh, smashed up <laughs> for lack of better words and impounded so we're trying to connect them also with uh, the services uh, they need to uh, recuperate all of their belongings also what's happened since i guess there's there's been a, a variety of uh, legal challenges filed also uh, concerning both the invocation of the emergencies act um, and also uh, just the, the the treatment of of donors for example who have had their accounts frozen things of that nature so uh, so a lot has happened since that day. Uh, we're looking at uh, Tamara Leach also being held as uh, a political prisoner effectively for, for very petty counts of mischief. And we're seeing this, uh, we're moving in on a third uh, bail review hearing, which is unheard of to take this long for somebody who only had uh, two mischief related counts leveled against them. And, and it's extremely disheartening and demoralizing in so far as our justice system is concerned. But uh, I am confident that she will be released shortly. Uh, it's just such a shame that this is what it has come to, that the government was able to paint this narrative of us being violent insurrectionists, uh, occupying the city and uh, harming local residents, whereas there's so much evidence, whether it be videos or written uh, testimonies and photographs that would uh, definitely counter that narrative and demonstrate that we were just there uh, protesting peacefully and exercising our, our charter rights to do so. Dagna, there is uh, quite a bit to unpack there. We last spoke to you, we saw how she had been arrested on that uh, fateful Thursday night. It's hard to believe that she is still in detention. It would be two weeks ago tonight, in fact, that she was arrested. You spoke there about people having their bank accounts frozen, and we kind of see that in the abstract. But it must be unbelievable to go up to an ATM machine and find that you cannot get money or your credit card or your debit card won't work in a shop when you went to buy 
food or if you have children, it must be terrible that you cannot buy provisions for them. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. So you're you're absolutely right uh, to to approach an ATM machine or uh, have a bill payment that needs to be paid and to realize in that way that your account is frozen and you're unable to do so is it's horrifying for anybody. And what's what's more alarming is that this is a measure. Uh, the account freezing is a measure that is very drastic and that uh, is usually used to to curb instances of money laundering, terrorism, uh, things of that nature. Whereas here we've had uh, absolute and, and total evidence that the people who are being targeted were no more than regular blue collar Canadians, hardworking people who uh, were just supporting a cause they believed in. Um, we've actually, to that point, had, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the articles surfacing, uh, wherein Barry McKillop, the deputy director of uh, intelligence for the Canadian uh, financial uh, intel agency called FinTrack, um, actually spoke out to say that, no, they do not believe there have been any instances of uh, money laundering or malicious intent uh, behind any of these don donations yet this Trudeau government is still trying to paint it as such. And there's so much evidence surfacing to counter that narrative right now. It's unbelievable that they uh, can still hold on to it. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, they have been unfreezing these accounts due to uh, the, the mounting public pressure and the pressure coming from these, these very institutions uh, saying that, that there's absolutely no reason to freeze anybody's accounts. Do we have any idea how many people have been affected by this move? You know what? I, I, I can't give you a specific figure. I just know personally from uh, a variety of the organizers I've been working with, uh, they've all uh, uh, been, been, been hit pretty hard. Um, I also heard that a lot of people who donated as, as little as $20 at a time were also targeted by these measures. Uh, and, and I can't tell you exactly how many. What is the situation now in general in Canada? Has the vaccine mandates been lifted or are they still in place? And what's the situation in relation to masks and all of the other restrictions uh, that were brought in? Yeah, so it's so I think it, it's, it's quite uh, interesting to see how um, there, there, there have been you know, there have been victories that, that came from this. Uh, I, I would actually say that, you know, we were not, uh, we were not defeated uh, despite uh, the, the government's heavy handed approach to us. I think that we actually had a lot of success and that is evidenced uh, by uh, the changes that happened on a governance level, on a COVID restriction level and on a political level. So we've seen um, the, the change in, in overtures sung by so many different parties now uh, that support the Freedom Convoy. Uh, and we see that in so far as COVID restrictions go, uh, they have been uh, they have been lightened as well. I know that in British Columbia and in Quebec, they've been lifting these uh, restrictions. I know that in Ontario, as of uh, yes, the day before yesterday on March 1st, uh, they have lifted vaccination restrictions for entering into certain non-essential establishments. So there is uh, this domino effect that we're seeing happening right now. Uh, but but unfortunately, I, I don't think that's enough. I think it is great uh, a great beginning. I think that the momentum has begun. Uh, the, uh, the the narrative has finally permeated into the mainstream media, um, whether it's uh, favorable to the Freedom Convoy or not is a different story. But right now we see that people are waking up. Uh, governments uh, are now recognizing that this is not a fringe minority movement of crazy extremist insurrectionists, but rather this is just a, a, a pretty large swath of the Canadian population that has had enough, that has said no more. And we're seeing this happen. We're seeing it reflected in the lifting of these restrictions. So I would definitely qualify that as a win. And with, uh, with the momentum that's been sparked and this, this flame that has been lit, uh, I don't think it'll be extinguished anytime soon.
So that's quite a positive note uh, to end this update. And uh, Dagna, is there anything else that you would like to add to what you have just been telling us? Oof, um, I just want to say that it's it, it's still incredibly, incredibly heartening and and really mind blowing to see just uh, what a ripple effect this Freedom Convoy has uh, initiated uh, across the world. I think something uh, like 30 countries uh, all around the world have uh, initiated their own Freedom Convoys. And it's incredible how how organically this movement has exploded uh, throughout not just uh, Ontario, Canada, but the world. And, and it's, it's really, really exciting to see because I think that, that some, some very, very dramatic changes will be happening in the near future, given this new, um, this new awakeness that, that people seem to be undergoing. Um, I think it's fantastic to see how people are continuing their protests in Ottawa. All these different community groups have risen to the fore and are now taking the initiative to carry on this momentum, to carry on with organizing protests, to, to carry on voicing their, their discontent and, and using their, their right to assemble in peaceful protest, both in, in Ottawa and in all different provinces. We're seeing slow rolls happening, um, all in a very decentralized, organic manner where the, the Freedom Convoy was able to inspire um, through the sacrifice of these truckers there for three weeks in Ottawa. And people have, have not taken that uh, lightly. They're, they're going to, to carry on. Uh, they're going to keep stoking that flame and, and making sure that we keep fighting for no more mandates. Well, Dagna, thank you for that update. And hopefully we'll be able to um, chat to you sometime in the future for another update. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. To those of you who have been watching, thank you so much. M Compass Media is a new online news platform that strives to bring you an alternative to what you're hearing in mainstream media. We'll never ask you for monetary contributions, but we do ask you, please, to share this video to get it out to a much wider audience. Until we meet again on the state we're in, Banat Day Arif Goler.